Today we're going to make a space scene. We're going to use some free spacey images that you can find online. Set those 2D images up in a 3D scene, pass a camera through that scene, um, but you can use anything you want as a point of interest in the center. So let's start off by making a new composition. We'll call this space, uh, 1920 by 1080. So firstly, if I double click this rectangle that fills the background, and we're gonna use this black solid as our background layer, unlock that. Uh, next thing I'll do is drag in this stars layer, add a levels effect, and just bring down the black values, because all we really want is for the white stars to show through. Um, so I'm also gonna add a hue and saturation and just take the color out. Uh, I'm using FX console, I'll put a link in the description where you can download that for free. It's really helpful for adding in all kinds of effects straight onto the layer. So I'm adding a levels effect. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's a bit of gray, but we basically want to have as close to a black background with stars. And then next add the galaxy image. So this is a full photo, but what I'll do is just kind of add a rough mask around the section that I want. Um, it'll end up getting quite blended, so we don't have to be too precise at this point. I'm just gonna feather that mask around 500 pixels, and I'm gonna do the same with this, add a levels, and bring down the dark values, bring up the mids, just so that it blends a little bit better. Um, I will center the anchor point. I'm using Motion 4 uh, for these anchor point tools, but you could easily Use the anchor point tool up here and change where it is manually. And then with that in the middle, scale it up, rotate it a little bit. So it doesn't look very good at the moment, but we're gonna blend everything together, so that's fine. The last thing we've got is this extra layer. Got some clouds. I'm gonna mask out the stars in this image completely. And again, I'm gonna use a really big feather on this so it'll blend it together um, if you click and drag any point of a mask while you have it selected and the mouse is down you can use the first letter of each type of mask so add is a subtract is s and it will change kind of the way the mask works so i'm going to just subtract that press f for feather feather that up and i'm probably going to have that at about 500 because this image is quite large, so it needs quite a large feather, 600 maybe. Um, so these are the three images that we're going to use to create our scene. If I just solo on the stars layer, I want this to fill the background, so I'm also going to add a motion tile. I'm going to mirror the edges and just bump both of these bottom values to 200. And that means that around the edge of the frame, it will be repeated and kind of mirrored. I'm probably going to add that to most of the layers. As the camera kind of pans back, we might end up clipping some of these edges like this. So if I make all of these images 3D layers, uh, the next thing we want to do is add a camera. So I'm going to right click new camera and I want to make this a 50 millimeter camera and just click OK. So at the moment, all the 3D layers are in the same default position in 3D space. And when we make layers 3D, they kind of automatically end up in the center of this 3D world. We're going to space these layers out, push some back and bring some forward. The scene is 3D, but the layers within it are still 2D images. And if we space them out and push a camera through it, it gives the illusion of kind of this parallax and like a 3D world. I'm going to take the galaxy and parent it to the star layer. And I'm going to bring up the position for the star and make this 100,000. And it'll get really small, but then you also make the scale much larger and fill the frame again. So this pushes everything way back in 3D space. Um, and then when we start to move our camera back and forth, you'll be able to see some parallax between the background and foreground. I like using nulls to attach to my cameras. so. Um, you could right click new null object and then that will create a null for you but because I've got motion I'm going to use this. You might be tempted if you've got a plugin like this to click the camera and then parent the camera to a null like that. But I find that this parents the null 
to the camera itself, whereas actually what I prefer is to have the null in the center of our 3D space, make it a 3D layer and then parent the camera to it afterwards. So instead of the null being here on the camera, it's where the camera is focused to. And I just much prefer that. I think it's a, a better layout for the cameras. So I'll go back to this view. Um, now I'm gonna add some keyframes. I'm just gonna use linear keyframes because this null is going to give us a really slow zoom and a slow tilt. So on the position, I'll add a keyframe here and a keyframe at about one second. I'm also gonna add a rotation on the Z. And if I press U, it will show me all the keyframes that I have active. So at the beginning of this, I'm gonna make this about three degrees rotation. And at the end, I'll push this in Z space about 1250. Um, so both of these are now slowly zooming forward but then they just stop. So what I'm going to do is alt click on stopwatch and just add the loop, loop out. And I'm going to do continue. Um, if I copy all of that, alt click the rotation and add it to that as well. Then now the rotation and the zoom just carry on uh, infinitely. And this is really good for getting kind of like some subtle motion all the way through your clip and then if we want to add any extra zooms, then I will add another null, make that null 3D and parent that original one to that. So then if I add a position keyframe on this one and I show all my original ones, now I can zoom back maybe like another 2,500, go minus 2,500 so that we move back. Um, and if I make this a steep curve so that it starts off very quick and then eases out, now we have our zoom in and then the camera will continue to pan at a steady rate. So that's a way that I like to combine kind of this loop out function but then add extra motion on top of it. Um, so take this cloud layer and I'm going to add it about a thousand pixels in Z space. Maybe make that 2000 and then I'm going to add some effects to it. Uh, there's an effect that I really like and it's called Unmult. Uh, it basically just knocks out any of the dark black values in your image. So if you have an image that has black values, it will make them transparent. And this is just such a nice way of giving things transparency and kind of making them blend in with scenes. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that. I'm also going to add a levels effect so that I can bring down, bring out some of the details, bring down some of the highlights a little bit. I'm going to add a motion tile effect, mirror the edges to 150 this time. 200% doubles the width. Um, and if I show you 200% on the height, uh, it starts to wrap back around. So I'm just going to crop it here. When you've color corrected your layers, I'm gonna duplicate this and bring this to minus 1000. So I'm gonna scale both of these up quite a lot and check the positions of them. This one I'm gonna bring down to the bottom corner and this other one I'm gonna rotate, put in the top corner. And because the way these masks are kind of cutting out a corner of each of these images, um, it creates quite a natural window. And so the camera is now zooming past these. And by the time it gets to about two seconds, we can't see either of those anymore. So I'm just going to duplicate one more. And I'm going to push that back to like maybe 17,000. And again, just like rotate, scale, probably drop the opacity of this one because I want it to be more subtle. Drop that down to 50. And now when we zoom through, we still have a bit of detail between our first front layer and the back galaxy layer. So now we have some nice 3D parallax using a couple of uh, still images. If I look from the left, you can see that here are a few of our layers close to the camera 
and then our background layers are all the way over here and the camera kind of starts off quickly and then goes to a slow linear pace and that looks good for now but what we can do to elevate this is add some effects maybe double click this rectangle again and add a lens flare I like to choose the third one down, change the blend mode to add, and then if you put the center around where your galaxy is, because uh, that's gonna be the most light in the scene, and then bring the opacity down to maybe like 40%. This just brightens up the scene and adds that kind of cinematic extra element, and then you can add an adjustment layer with can add a curves and if we boost the highlights and drop the shadows a little bit kind of like add some extra grain have to change it from preview to final output and I normally drop the size down to 0.5 because it's quite chunky to begin with maybe drop the intensity to 0.5 as well um, just add some texture to our scene so there we have a 3D camera moving through space, uh, just made up with some 2D layers and some effects like some glow and some lens flares and things. You can add anything you want as the focal point. You can kind of add some 3D objects in there. Um, I think it looks pretty awesome. Please do like and subscribe if you found this helpful. I'll be putting this project up. That'll be available to download through Gumroad. So yeah, thanks.